recently we've been talking a lot about functions. Functions in the term of y equals x, y equals x plus 1. We've been evaluating these functions and we've been graphing these functions. We're going to talk a little bit more generally about functions and we're going to talk about some vocabulary around functions. A relation is any pairing of numbers. A function is a type of relation. A relation has two sets of numbers, the domain and the range. It's important to note for our purposes that the domain most closely refers to x values and the range most closely refers to y values. You can also think about them as input and output. So if we think about this in more abstract terms, we could say that a relation relates some body of numbers we'll call the domain and it's this amorphous group of numbers and it relates those to some other group of numbers we'll call the range. So for instance we might have numbers in the domain like negative 2, 0, 4, 5. And what the relation does then is it relates it to other numbers in the range like 3, 4, 5, and 8. So a normal relation looks like this. Some number in the domain goes to some number in the range. That's a relationship, a relation. So when I have a domain of negative 2, that relates directly to the range or output or y value of 3. Up to now, we've often written these in this sort of format, where we have x, y as an input-output chart, and we'd write negative 2, 3, 0, 4, so on, so on, so forth. It's important to note that the values in the domain have to point to unique values in the range. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean that you can't have the number 2 point to, say, both 4 and 7 in the range. That's not allowed. Negative 2 has to point to one number and one number only in the range. So, for instance, 0 might point to 7, and 4 might point to 5, and 5 might point to 10. See how each number points to one other number? Now, that being said, 5 doesn't necessarily have to point to 10. 5 could also point to 7, just like 0 does. But it's still only pointing to one number. And 0 is only pointing to one number. They're pointing to the same number, that's okay. But they can only point to one number. If we think about that same scenario I just described, that is what we call a vertical line test, or um, the fact that that function would fail the vertical line test. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say on this graph we had some vertical line, and it's right here at x equals 4. Okay. If you were to circle two separate points on that line, let's say 4, 4, and 4, negative 3, and you were to list the domain and range for those points, you would say, okay, x, y, and for the x value you'd put 4, and here you'd put 4, and then for the x value, you'd have 4 still, and for the y value, you'd put negative 3. And see how in this case, the 4 points to the 4 and the 4 points to the negative 3? That's not allowed, just like in the last slide I was talking about. So this is not a function because it fails the vertical line test. And we call it the vertical line test because if on a function, you can draw a vertical line and touch the function twice, then it fails the vertical line test. Let me show you another example. Let's say we had some function that looked like this, this sort of sideways U. Okay. It looks kind of like a parabola, but on its side. The problem with this function is it's not a function because it fails that vertical line test. If I draw a vertical line through my function, I'm going to cross it twice, which means negative 2 is actually going to produce two results. It's going to produce 3, it looks like, or thereabouts, and negative 3, which is not allowed. However, if I have a function that looks like this, okay, you might say, well, doesn't that have the same problem? No. Draw a vertical line anywhere along this function, and you're still only going to cross it once. 
draw a horizontal line and you're going to cross it twice, but that's okay. That's when you have two x values, such as uh, negative 3 and 3, pointing to the same y value. That's allowed, but you can't have an x value pointing to two different y values. That's not allowed. And finally, I want to talk about something called function notation. So up till now, we've written our functions pretty much like this. y equals 2x plus 3. We're not changing that. The only thing we're doing differently is we're no longer going to write y, but for function notation, we're going to write f parentheses x close parentheses. And that means the same thing. Those two things are interchangeable, y and and the way we read this, by the way, is f of x, meaning the f function as it relates to the x variable. And then the rest of the function would be exactly the same. And that's function notation. Function notation literally means instead of writing y, we're writing f of x. If we have two functions, we might write f of x. And if we have another function, maybe not f, we have to name it something else, just like we have to change variables. In this case, we could call it g of x or h of x and those would be different functions so instead of using y we can use these different function notations to relate different functions f of x g of x h of x if i want to evaluate something in terms in function notation that would look like this let's say we had a function f of x is equal to 4x plus 1 and i said okay I want you to evaluate what full f of 2 is. What that means is I want you to take 2 and I want you to plug it into this function everywhere you see x. So I want you to evaluate this function as if x equals 2. And what that looks like is 4 times 2, not x, plus 1. So f of 2 is how we would read that, would be 9. Because 2 times 4 is 8, 8 plus 1 is 9. So that's how you evaluate that, evaluate that function for f of 2. There are times with functions where they're going to give you a very specified domain. So let's look at another function. f of x is equal to, let's say, 1 third x. And they're going to say, okay, I just want you to look at a very specific domain. I want you to look at 6 and 3 and 0 and negative 3 and negative 6. And I want to know what's my range over that domain. What they're basically saying is, if this is my domain, if these are my x values, what y values would that produce? So what you do is, for each one, you say f of, let's say 6 in this case, is going to be equal to 1 third um, 6. And what's 1 third 6? 2. So f of 6 equals 2, which means 2 would be in our, do our range. So we'd start writing our range the same way they have the domain written. And you would do that for each number. So we did 6, then you would do that for 3, and then you would do that for 0, and then you would do that for negative 3, and then you would do that for negative 6. And that would be your range. Your range would be, if your domain is 6, 3, 0, negative 3, negative 6, your, do, your range would be 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2.